we had enough. Um, next year, we will have enough, and we're going to be right back in the same situation, and uh, we're going to get it done. Even after definitively shocking the world by upsetting a 58-win Milwaukee Bucks team in five games, then putting to bed an overly aggressive Knicks fan base by eliminating New York in six, fans in South Beach have seen their team both not receive sufficient media attention and for the most part be counted out in terms of their chances to win the conference finals. ESPN has given this Mickey Arison-owned Pat Riley-directed Eric Spolstra coached and Jimmy Butler led ball club looking to secure franchise title number four, merely a 4% chance at pulling off a third straight series upset against the Boston Celtics. The Celtics have been proclaimed as the clear-cut favorites to advance to their second straight NBA Finals, but those thinking Miami's veteran-fueled three-point space and pace team built for the modern NBA doesn't even have a chance at exacting revenge in this year's East Finals rematch simply aren't given the Heat the credit they've deserved but haven't received all playoffs. The Heat disrespect has to stop. Right quick, just 13.1% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter for a follow back. Any bit of support is greatly appreciated. Back to the content. So, despite losing their first play-in game to Atlanta, and then barely squeaking out a win to the Chicago Bulls in their second game of the play-in tournament, Dade County now finds themselves in the exact same position they were in at this time last year, the conference finals. The Heat and the Celtics will meet in the conference finals for the third time in four years in what's become one of the NBA's best rivalries. Miami's the first number eight seed in 24 years, so nearly a quarter of a century, to qualify for the NBA's Final Four. Last year, with Butler missing a three-pointer that would have given Miami a shot at the Warriors in the finals and would have resulted in the franchise's seventh total conference championship, this exact moment is what all of the Heat's players, coaching staff, front office, and fan base have been fantasizing over for 12 months. Jimmy Butler III turns up his game a notch from the regular season to the playoffs better than any player in the association, and with a champion in the greatest Toronto Raptor of all time and Kyle Lowry next to him, a man in Kay Lau who's found the prime version of himself after being moved to the bench, Mr. Buckets can smell his first championship ring. Butler's first round series against Milwaukee saw him lead all players throughout the opening round in scoring, averaging a beastly 37.6 points per game on nearly 70% true shooting, which included dropping the most points in a game to this day that anyone's put up in the 2023 playoffs. Among players who put up at least 10 shots per game in that first round, Butler's field goal and three-point percentage were second best, only trailing Devin Booker. A big brunt of that damage has come from isolations, where Jimmy's 44 points rank him as the sixth best one-on-one -on -one player throughout the postseason as a whole. But what makes Butler unpredictable for defenders is how incredibly balanced his bucket getting really is. Just behind a primary cutter in Gary Payton II, Butler's 33 points rank him 11th in buckets on cuts to the basket. His 106 points as the pick and roll ball handler are third most only behind Brunson and Curry. His 47 points in transition are ninth most among all players. His 14 points on putbacks rank him in the top 12. And Jimmy's eight points after using off ball screens rank him 14th in the NBA in that category. In each of those categories, meaning from the ISO, as the cutter, as the pick and roll ball handler, in transition, off putbacks, and off screens, Butler's the only player in these NBA playoffs to rank top 14. This man Jimmy quite literally scores from all over the place, which makes him a nightmare for opposing head coaches to game plan for, and conversely for his own head coach in Eric Spolstra, a man that can be turned to at any given time in any scenario. To suppose credit, most of the time, the elite man in charge does anything he can to get Butler the rock in late game scenarios, so much so that back on March 11th in a one point game with 26 seconds left against the Cleveland Cavaliers, you can see he was caught on camera desperately trying to let his team know to get Butler open. After receiving the pass, Butler promptly scored a pull up jumper over Lamar Stevens with 18 seconds to go two of his 33 points on 12 for 16 shooting as the Heat won 119-115.
However, it's not always that smooth. A month and a half later, with the heat down 2 to Milwaukee in the dying seconds of Game 5 in Round 1, Spolstra and Butler wouldn't initially be on the same page like they were in that aforementioned regular season game. Specifically, the Heat trailed 118-116 with 2.1 seconds left before calling timeout, when coach Eric Spolstra drew up a play that was designed poorly in the eyes of Hibby, Butler didn't like what he saw and let Eric know. Spo then changed his mind and set up the SOB action to have Gabe Vincent throwing an inbounds pass to Butler, who was waiting underneath the hoop, and forced overtime. Spo put that moment in detail after Miami would knot it up at 118 apiece to force OT, after of which his team would become the first ever play-in team to win a series, the first 8 seed to win a playoff series in over a decade, and just the 6th number 8 seed of all time to win a playoff series, saying quote, We've practiced different variations of that play with a bunch of different guys. I was going to do a different version of it. He just said, no, let me be that guy. I just said, okay, but what if we can't get that pass? He said, I'll get it. Don't worry about it. He's desperate and urgent and maniacal and sometimes psychotic about the will to try to win. He'll make everybody in the building feel it. That's why he is us and we are him. That's the way we operate as well. End quote. Somewhere between psychotic and iconic, moments like that prove to you that Butler's not merely built for the moment, he absolutely craves it and won't accept anything less than embracing it to the fullest extent. So at times, that definitive dog in him can get Butler and Spolstra into some heated back and forths, but at the end of the day, the only real concern or question mark for the everlasting Pat Riley bred former Miami Heat film room guy in Spolstra quite frankly, is... What's in the cup? We, we have to ask what's in the cup. Don't worry about it. Okay, I didn't think so. <laughs> it was earned, I'm Very sure. Very observant. Whatever, whatever yeah. it is was earned. In all seriousness, Butler is surrounded by a cast of talent that also accept him as the ballsy, extremely vocal top option that he is, and the playing styles of said supporting cast perfectly mesh with the qualities that he brings to the table. We'll start with the number two, and since one of the only things Butler doesn't provide is role man scoring, it helps to have one of the most athletic big men across the association in the new age Dwight Howard, Bam Adebayo, who leads all players in points scored as the roller in these playoffs. Adebayo infamously tore his jersey when heading to the locker room last year after losing to the Celtics in the conference finals. It'll be interesting to see what combination of force and focus the product of Kentucky plays with in this East Finals rematch. Because if there's one X factor in this series, it's out of bio. And considering Bam somewhat fulfilled his role by being second on the Heat in scoring minutes and steals so far in these playoffs, while leading South Beach with 9.2 rebounds per game over 11 outings in the postseason, he seems physically equipped to live up to the X factor label. But no matter how well Bam plays, the Heat have to have the floor spacers on this team come through to an even better extent than they did in the opening two rounds. The best shooting story has come from a man shooting 43% from distance in these playoffs in Duncan Robinson, who was out of the rotation for a large portion of the regular season, but evidently stayed prepared and has stepped up into one of this team's top role players. A man leading this team in three-pointers attempted in Gabe Vincent needs to make more than 33% of his triples per game if the Heat are going to advance to the finals, as that was Gabe's percentage through the first two rounds. While NBA champion, a former most improved player and five-time All-Star Kevin Love is a player that the Cavaliers almost certainly regret letting go of, his efficiency from deep range also has to increase. The same goes for Max Struess, as while Max made a solid 37% of his six triples attempted through the first two rounds, beating a deeply talented Boston team will require that percentage to climb above 40%. Miami will especially need Robinson, Vincent, Love, and Struess to have big series, considering there's no timetable for the return of Tyler Hero, who was this team's third 20-point-per-game score during the year but also taking into account how shockingly well Miami's performed without Hero in these playoffs, with Kyle Lowry fulfilling that role as the second dominant ball handler and committing to setting up Butler instead of over dribbling and taking away looks from Jimmy, the rhythm that Butler's established and the Heat's overall success 
has something to do with an addition by subtraction of Tyler. Whenever Hero gets back, he may have to reevaluate his place in Miami's hierarchy, but Spolstra spoke on a potential Hero return, saying, quote, The good thing about a hand is you're able to do other things with that, but he can't shoot, he can't dribble, I don't have an update, he won't be playing Wednesday, end quote. The creation of Jimmy has carried this core and will continue to take Miami as far as they go, with his ability to create shots from nothing, whenever and wherever said bucket needs to be manufactured, but without the X-Factors, which will be the story of this series for Miami. They aren't making the finals. How Vincent, Robinson, Love, and Struess, and the second primary creator in the legend formerly of my Raptors and Lowry perform, will determine the outcome for Miami in this series. With that said, the depth of this Heat team really shows up. When you consider that I've gone this whole video without mentioning the top two players in field goal percentage throughout the playoffs for this group, and the undrafted third-year pro, Haywood Highsmith, who's shooting 55.6% from the field, and the undrafted fourth-year pro in Caleb Martin, who's shooting 52.6% from the field. Nevertheless, the magic that Jimmy Buckets has in store for round three, I think I speak for us all when I say, is something we're looking forward to witnessing.